So I'm going to talk about surgery for lung nets. And um, as we've discussed, um, the um, nomenclature for neuroendocrine tumors is quite complicated. And in the lung, we've called them typical and atypical carcinoids. Um, we are trying to move a little bit away from that, but this is the World Health Organization classification from 2015. And so we essentially divide them by grade. So typical carcinoid, atypical carcinoid, large cell, and then small cell. And this depends on the number of mitoses and um, whether any necrosis is present um, in the specimens, in the biopsies. So today I'm going to talk about surgery for typical and atypical carcinoids, or the well-differentiated long neuroendocrine tumors. We generally operate for um, localized or local regional disease that can be completely resected. So in practice, this is stages 1 through 3A, although 3A can be unresectable at times. And that means that the tumor is confined to the lung and the thoracic lymph nodes on the same side as the tumor. Patients obviously have to be good surgical candidates as well, so we check their functional status. Um, we check pulmonary function tests to see how healthy their lungs are and make sure that patients won't be short of breath or require oxygen after we've removed a portion of their lung. We check um, their heart, if appropriate, and we always recommend smoking cessation. Preoperatively, we get a CT scan of the chest with IV contrast. We get a dotatate PET scan to look for any spread to lymph nodes or metastases. We get either a CT-guided or bronchoscopic biopsy most of the time. So we generally divide the tumors into central tumors, which are accessible through the airways, and peripheral tumors, which are on the edge of the lung. And so central tumors that are accessible through the airways, we often biopsy with a bronchoscopy. So we'll put a camera down and then take a small piece of the tumor. So we call that a bronchoscopic or endobronchial biopsy. And tumors that are on the edge of the lung, we do a CT-guided biopsy. So a small needle will be um, placed using CT guidance from the outside of the body. Uh, carcinoid and Cushing syndromes are very rare, um, but we do check the hormone levels if patients have symptoms, and we give intraoperative octreotide to prevent those syndromes and prevent carcinoid crisis during surgery if patients do have those. Uh, this is a, um, pictures from a patient who had a very central tumor. So this patient was a 23-year-old woman, never smoker, who reported wheezing for about three years and was treated for asthma. And this is a really common presentation for patients with central tumors because they block the airway. And it's much more common for patients to have asthma than a neuroendocrine tumor. Um, so she was treated for several years until she went to an emergency room for abdominal pain. And when they got the CT scan of the abdomen, that included a few cuts of the lung. And so they saw this small tumor, you can see on the um, left side, that CT scan is what we call a coronal cut, so it's a cut going this way in the body. And the red arrow points to a small tumor that was found in one of the airways leading to her middle and lower lobes. And so she had a bronchoscopy, which is shown on the right side, and so that picture shows the camera in the right main bronchus, and you can see as the bronchus splits, there's a tumor in there in part of the airway that we call the bronchus intermedius. And that's a classic appearance of lung neuroendocrine tumors. They're pink and tan and very well lobulated. Um, they do have a tendency to bleed, so it's really important that if someone does bronchoscopies, they know the classic appearance of this and they're ready to stop the bleeding if they take a biopsy or a little piece of it. So the standard of care is an anatomic lung resection. Most commonly, we do a lobectomy. So um, the lung has three lobes on the right and two lobes on the left. And generally, we like to remove the lobe that the tumor is in. So it, we take out all of the lung tissue around there, as well as all the lymph nodes that the tumor could drain into. If we remove one lobe, it's called a lobectomy, two lobes a bilobectomy. If the tumor involves all of the lobes on one side, then we take out the entire lung on one side, and that's called a pneumonectomy. It's also really important that we take out all the lymph nodes that are accessible on the side of the chest that we're operating on, and that's called a lymph node sampling or dissection. 
So here's a classic case of a patient um, who had a lobectomy. This was a 62-year-old man, also never smoker, who was incidentally found to have a left lower lobe um, tumor. So I can't remember why he got this CT scan, but he wasn't having any symptoms, which is really common for peripheral tumors because they don't encroach on the airway um, and don't cause the patients any symptoms. So he had the CT scan. Um, on the left side is the axial cut, so these are sections going like this across the body, and then on the right side, the coronal cut, so again, cutting this way through the body. And most of these small white dots and lines throughout the lung are normal blood vessels on either side, but you can see that the tumor is much larger than any of those, so obviously abnormal, um, and the red arrow points to the tumor in the left lower lobe. So this patient underwent a robotic um, or minimally invasive left lower lobectomy. So for patients who have tumors that are more central and involving the airway, sometimes we do lung sparing surgery. And so we found that we can remove a piece of the airway alone and leave them with more of their lung. Um, so, for example, these are pictures of a right upper lobectomy sleeve resection. So, um, let me point here. So, this is the trachea, or the main windpipe, and that splits into the right side and the left side. And on the right side, this splits into the, um, an airway going to the right upper lobe and then an airway going down to the middle and lower lobes. And so if you have a tumor here that's at the takeoff leading to the right upper lobe, you can imagine that in order to get a good margin and completely remove this, you would have to cut right here and remove the entire right lung. And that is what we used to do. And then many years ago, we, surgeons realized that we could actually sew airway together and it would heal. And so now we do what's called a sleeve resection for tumors in this area. And so we'll cut on either side and remove this sleeve of airway. And then we have to sew the two sides back together. And there are certain um, lobes where that is easier or harder or even impossible. Um, but it's really nice for patients with, with um, tumors in certain locations because they can be left with more lung um, which leads to a better quality of life. This is a picture of a right lower bilobectomy um, sleeve that I did last year. And so, again, this is the coronal view. So this is their right lung, um, this black area, and then their left lung here. And then the middle is what we call the mediastinum, so the heart, um, blood vessels, esophagus, all lie in here in the airway. And this is the airway here. So again, the trachea or the main windpipe um, uh, branching into the right side and the left side to bring air to both lungs. And here's this tumor. And it's um, really um, growing from that airway that leads down to the middle and lower lobes. So again, we would normally think we'd have to cut right here and just remove the entire right lung. But instead, I made two cuts, and in this um, patient, I removed the middle and lower lobes and then sewed these two airways together so that she was left with her upper lobe. It's really important to remove all of the lymph nodes on the same side or any of the lymph nodes that are accessible on the side that you're operating on. And we have a whole classification system based on the location of the lymph nodes. Um, and so you can see that they generally follow the airways and we will remove all of them that we can that come out naturally with our lung resection, as well as the mediastinal lymph nodes, the lymph nodes in the center of the chest. So I'll talk a little about surgical incisions, and I have some pictures from the operating room. Just like abdominal surgery, we divide our thoracic surgery into open and minimally invasive. Uh, minimally invasive is divided into VATS, or video-assisted thoracic surgery, or we often call it thoracoscopy, and that's essentially the um, the comparable to laparoscopy in the abdomen. Um, and then we also can use the robotic. Sometimes people call this robot-assisted thoracic surgery or RATS, but I don't like that term. 
So this is the traditional way we did uh, thoracic surgery through what we call a posterolateral thoracotomy. So it's an incision, um, curved incision along the side and the back, and we go between the ribs. We do have to divide this large muscle, the latissimus dorsi, and we often um, purposefully take a small piece of a rib out just so it's a little more flexible and we can access the lung inside. This is a picture of my team in the operating room. So you can see with an open incision, we have um, a metal retractor to spread the ribs open. We're often wearing um, special um, loops so that we can see a little magnified. Um, we have headlights on so we can have some light into the field and our hands are actually in the, in the body. This usually causes more pain, as you can imagine, than minimally invasive surgery. So we will often give patients an epidural beforehand to help with pain control after surgery. For VAT surgery, we usually make three small incisions between the ribs. One of them we do have to make a little bit larger. It's usually this one. So we can actually pull the lung out when we've separated it from the body. And this is a picture of one of my partners doing VAT surgery. And so you can see we're standing in the dark. We're holding a camera and instruments by hand into the patient who is uh, lying here. And we're actually doing the entire operation looking up at monitors, um, looking up at a screen. So even people who aren't right next to the patient can see what we're doing and what we're working on. And finally, robotic surgery. Um, here we generally make five incisions. Again, one has to be a little larger to remove the specimen. And so at the bedside, we'll have um, one of our assistants, um, usually a physician's assistant or a resident in training, who um, hooks up the robot arms, there are four, and they essentially um, uh, dock the robot and hook up all the instruments so the robot is holding everything. And then um, the surgeons are sitting at consoles, and so this is my fellow and me, uh, sitting at a console just a few feet away controlling the robot. So there are a couple controversies in lung resections for neuroendocrine tumors. One for um, peripheral tumors, whether um, patients will benefit from a sublobar resection. And then for central tumors, whether we could do endobronchial resections. So for sublobar resections, there are two types. One of them is called anatomic, and this is called a segmentectomy. So each lobe is made up of several segments. And anatomic means that we do it similar to a lobectomy. So we find the artery, vein, and airway that are leading to that segment of the lung, and we remove it. And you can see the diagram on the right is really of a lobectomy, but the idea is the same, um, that we're removing that portion of the lung and all the lymph nodes that go with it. Um, so the risk to the patient is very similar to a lobectomy. On the right side, there's a non-anatomic sublobar resection, which we call a wedge resection. And this is possible for peripheral tumors that are small. And you can see that we remove the tumor with a little rim of normal lung, but we really don't get to the central area where we have to find the blood vessels and the airways. And so this is much lower risk to the patient, but we don't remove as much lung and we don't remove as many lymph nodes. So surgeons have been really interested in whether we can remove just a sublobar resection for patients. And we have found that there may be a role for very small tumors that are at the edge of the lung um, that don't have any lymph node involvement. So really the peripheral tumors at the very earliest stages. However, there's still a lot of caveats about that because we are still missing lymph nodes. So it's important to check those. Um, we would only do it with the very um, well-differentiated tumors with the lowest grade. So if patients end up um, on final pathology, if that um, result differs from the preoperative biopsy and patients have atypical carcinoid, then we would really recommend that they get the entire lobe removed, which could be another surgery. So for me, for in almost all of my cases, I would still recommend a lobectomy and an anatomic resection unless patients just are poor surgical candidates. I often get asked about endobronchial resection for tumors that are central or within the airway. And this can be done by either thoracic surgeons or interventional pulmonologists with a lot of training to remove the tumors using a laser. Um, the problem with this is that a lot of these tumors extend through the airway into the lung parenchyma and we might, it might not be that obvious when we're looking with the camera. Um, these patients generally need a high resolution CT scan and another bronchoscopy fairly shortly to make sure that there's no spread. 
and a lot of patients who undergo bronchoscopic treatment will eventually need surgery, either because, again, their histology was atypical carcinoid, they were found to have residual disease outside the airway, or the tumor came back in that area. So again, endobronchial resection may have a role for the entirely intraluminal tumors that don't involve the wall of the airway. However, this requires a highly trained interventional pulmonologist um, or surgeon. Um, and it's a little hard to really determine sometimes at the beginning whether bronchoscopy is going to work. There's no lymph node assessment when they do the endobronchial resection, and it requires a lot of bronchoscopic surveillance, so not just the non-invasive CT scans, but an invasive um, procedure. So for now, again, endobronchial treatment is mostly reserved for patients who are poor surgical candidates, although it can be useful for patients who have a pneumonia because the tumor is blocking their airway. So in summary, we do surgery for um, resectable localized or local regional typical or atypical carcinoid, or the well-differentiated lung nets. This should be a lobectomy or greater and an anatomic resection and include a mediastinal lymph node sampling or dissection. For central tumors, um, we've learned to do sleeve resections or bronchoplasty that can preserve lung um, parenchyma and lung function for patients. And the other um, treatments, such as sublobar resection or endobronchial resection, are generally reserved for poor surgical candidates. Thank you so much for your attention. Please feel free to email me if you have any questions.